And I want to get to the news story of the day. Cavaliers coach John Beeline apologized this morning to his players after stunning them in a film session yesterday by saying <laughs> that they were no longer playing, quote, like a bunch of thugs. A story first reported last night by our Adrian Wojnarowski. Beeline says that he meant to use the word slug, not thug and was alerted by his coaching staff after the meeting as to what his exact verbiage was. Beeline spoke to reporters about the entire situation earlier today. So first of all, I want to be clear out something that, that yes, yesterday in a film session, uh, uh, I used a word that uh, when I meant to say uh, slug, uh, the word thug came out. Uh, it was brought to my attention a couple hours later. Called all the players afterwards, uh, explained the situation. We met about it today. We apologized. I apologized about it today as well. It was not it never intended, and uh, it, uh, I think the players understand that now. But it, it's uh, something I have to learn from and uh, just uh, uh, enunciate better and, and be, be just uh, more clearer with what, what my intentions were. Kendrick, if you were still a player on that Cavs team, would you accept his apology? Um. First of all, he's already lost the locker room. He, I mean, this is a story that's, that came out a month ago. So it, if I'm a player, what, what people fail to realize is that the NBA, you look at it and to, to people outside, it's a hobby. This is a job. This is work. Sometimes you go to work with people you don't like, but you still have to come to work. So you don't have to be friends with Coach Beeline. You don't have to accept his apology. As long as you step into them lines and go play the game of basketball, that's all that matters. And, Do you believe uh, him? No, I don't believe him. I mean, he said what he said, but the thing is he could apologize, but there's no way you're going to sit up here and make me think that the sky is green and the grass is blue. I'm not buying it. You can't say, oh, I meant to say slugs and you said thugs. You said what you said. How about just come out and apologize and said I should have just used a better choice of words? Well, if I, I mean, if I was in that locker room, it, it wouldn't have had to wait until tomorrow right. or today. You know, we would have talked about that in real time. In the moment. You know, in real time. And I wouldn't have been the only one in that locker room. It would have been a few guys step up and say, wait, wait, what did you just say? Mm -hmm. Because obviously he didn't understand that. But to me, I, didn't, I never understood the hire, you know. Um, <laughs> and I know he was a great coach in college. Um, but in, 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 in a world right now where everything is about being in touch and in tune mm -hmm. to the team and relatable with the team, to me, he's out of touch, yes. you know. And this, this is a prime example of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I never really understood the hire. I agree with Perk. I feel like even before this happened, the locker room was lost. Um, so he hadn't built up enough equity with the team for them to step up and say, oh, no, coach just messed up. But we, but we rolling with Coach. Yeah. He hadn't built up that kind of equity with the guys. And can you sort of explain for people, look, I've never been a young black man in a professional environment. That's just, that's, that's not what I look mm -hmm. like. Can you explain why that cuts so much when you work so hard to get where you are, to hear that? Well, it's such a negative connotation um, and, and, a, and, a, and a, it's, it's a racial undertone to the word thugs when you're talking about African-American players, whether what sport it is, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's always going to cut deep. You know, um, by the way, he's been a champion, played on some great teams, so have I. You need those dogs sure. on a team. Right. You know, you need that. To me, that word could be taken a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if we was off camera, it would be a little different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what, what we <laughs> would describe those <laughs> players as. On who, who it's coming from. Correct. How it's coming. And Correct. to your point, even from a 66-year-old 60, white man, maybe if he had spent more time with them, you spent time with Larry Brown, there's a different relationship after Correct. a period of time than maybe something else. His future with the team seems to be okay. Adrian Wojnarowski reporting this morning that they intend to move forward with him, that John Beeline uh, not only spoke to some members of the team last night after this became sort of more of a story, but then also again today in that team meeting. They're young players, and so a lot of them met individually with GM Kobe Altman, and again, the reporting is that Kobe says that the guys were universally or at least largely okay with it, that they understand it was serious, but that they were okay moving on. If you're a gu young guy in that locker room, are you comfortable saying anything else besides, okay, I guess we're going forward? Do you feel like they had the room to say, no, 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 this is a problem, we got to get rid of them? I, I don't know. I haven't well, been in that situation. Well, here's, here's the thing, and I got to piggyback off of what Sean said. This is the thing. We would address the problem then back in, in the, the day. But 
the, the Cavs don't have leadership. So who's going to address the problem? You know, it's like, it's not like the Cavs have a voice. Kevin Love is not a voice of the locker room. Obviously, we've seen that, and there's no knock on him, but he's not a leader. Well, in this situation, too. Well, yeah, but he's not a leader. But I'm Tristan saying. Tristan stepping up. I mean, well, there's mostly young players behind yeah, Tristan. So, right? so it's like, what do you do as a young player? You just kind of fall in suit. And then all of a sudden, you meet with Kobe. Kobe go tell you everything you want to hear, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm with Chance again on the back end. I said that, that this wasn't a good hire from the jump. You know, um, he he was he did great things for us when he was in the college level. But this also could be a humbling situation for Coach Beeline to put his pride aside mm-hmm. and do a self check and say, "Hey, I got to approach things a little differently now because I'm in a different situation." Yeah, it will be interesting to see how they go forward. Obviously, the franchise would not be eager to get rid of a coach they just hired. And, and sort of start that process all over again. <laughs> They're pay, supposed to pay him again for exactly for the next four years. So it's a, it's a developing situation. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.